Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in analog electronics. In this tutorial, we'll talk about hybrid pi model for transistors. And this model is specifically used for high frequency modeling of BJTs. The prerequisites for this tutorial is the understanding of hybrid model, which is H parameter model. We need to appreciate the fact that H parameter model is mainly focused for low frequency operations of BJT. So hybrid Pi model will take into account all those considerations which are required for high frequency working. So if this is something that interests you, then please keep watching. All right, the hybrid Pi model is primarily designed for two purposes. It is a method of more exact modeling and it takes into account all the frequency considerations. The hybrid Pi model has a lot to do with the physical construction of the transistor. We know that transistor has three layers out of which collector has the largest area followed by emitter and the base has the smallest area. If we look at the formula for resistance, which is rho L upon A and the dependency of the resistance on area reveals that the resistance of the collector will be the lowest and the resistance of the base will be the highest. And transistor being a three terminal device, we'll find three terminals, one coming out of the collector, one coming out of the base and one coming out of the emitter but there is certain resistance present within the layers of the transistor also that needs to be taken care of in exact modeling so that's the first key point so we cannot ignore the resistance of this material over here which is rcb which is very very small and rbe which is the resistance of the uh, area of emitter region so the resistance of the area in the base region will be the highest RBB dash and we cannot really ignore that. The typical values of RBB dash is around 400 ohms. Uh, I'm sorry, it's around 100 ohms and RB dash C is around 4 ohms and RB dash E is around 4 ohms. So they can be neglected as compared to external resistances. But the typical value of RBB dash is comparable to the resistance that we connect to the base terminal if we consider the base common uh, emitter configuration and the input is given at base. So the resistance which will be connected to the base will be comparable to 100 ohms so that cannot be ignored. And another key point here is that we assume a virtual base B dash and B dash acts as the fourth terminal and it is not a user accessible terminal. So this terminal is, so this terminal is only used for uh, the modeling of the transistor in a more exact way, which is of course the hybrid pi model. So once you know that there are three resistances present within the transistor area, and what are their relation with each other and what are the typical values you would not neglect them for exact modeling and another thing is the presence of uh, capacitances at the junctions so if i uh, assume that some capacitance is present at this junction and some capacitance is present at this junction curtsy now this capacitance is present because of the uh, doping concentration differences between the regions and some kind of uh, potential is developed across these two regions. So you could look more about these capacitances from the EDC lectures. But for the time being, we know that two capacitances are also present here. So th they need not be ignored because, because the inclusion of capacitances in the model will make it more exact and frequency consideration will be taken care of by the capacitances. Now we have the task of designing the hybrid pi model 
we take up all the terminals here b b dash is the virtual terminal c and e from going from b to b dash we find this resistance so i connect r b b dash from b to b dash and from b to e i see this resistance and going from b dash to c i see r c b dash and going from b dash to c E, I also find a capacitance that I draw something like this going from B dash to E I found this capacitance I label this capacitance as CE and going from B to B dash to C I find one more capacitance and I label it as CC dash so these two capacitances are found from B dash to C and B dash to E and from C to E, which is the output terminal, we get RCE, which is the output resistance, and we find this voltage-dependent current source, which is responsible for the amplification, of course. So this model, which looks more or less like a pi shape, is the hybrid pi model for transistors. And that's how you understand this, by taking into account the resistances, and the capacitances within the within the transistor due to its construction and of course you see that this capacitor and this resistor is connecting my output to the input so i can apply miller's theorem here on these two uh, impedances connected in parallel so i can place these impedances here with respect to the ground to simplify this network to solve it further and this RBB dash is known as base spreading resistance and it cannot be ignored and if we talk about this VBE, VBE this is the resistance across RB dash E and RB dash E is the sum total of all the resistances which may be connected with the output terminals also so the external terminal resistances are also considered in case of RCB dash and RBE dash and of course RBB dash also takes into account the external resistances but this is also uh, taken into account is and is not ignored so now let's have a look at this model in a more detailed way so I've drawn this full hybrid pi model if we want to label the terminals this is going to be B and this is E this is B dash this is C and of course this is E as I mentioned earlier this is one of the uh, three modeling schemes of transistors first we do the H parameter model then we do the RE model which is also known as the dynamic emitter resistance model and hybrid pi model is the most exact model that we have that takes into account all the uh, frequency considerations also however this model can also be reduced to a low frequency approximate model and we'll look into that as well now let's look at some of the component values here cu which we know is the capacitance across the cu is the capacitance across the terminal b dash and c but it is better known as early effect capacitor and its typical value is from few picofarad to tens of picofarads and c pi which is the capacitance between the uh, virtual base terminal to emitter is also known as diffusion capacitance and it is largely because of the minority carrier storage at base and its value is less than one picofarad to few picofarads and r pi here uh, will have a value of beta into RE which is the input resistance GM is a very popular parameter known as transconductance its value is output current to input voltage in our case the output current is IC and the input voltage is VBE and of course this is calculated when V out is kept equivalent to zero now this thing uh, this thing is taken from the hybrid parameter model and its definition also stems out from there 
and in our case specifically IC is the collector current and VT is the threshold voltage. So the threshold voltage is 26 millivolts in case of transistors that we typically use. So this is one such thing that you can commit to your memory. And another important relation is GMR pi is equivalent to beta and R naught is 1 upon H O E. Now we'll look into the conversion of this full hybrid pi model into an approximate into an approximate hybrid pi model which is more suitable for low frequency operations. So let's see how does this model changes. The assumptions that we take for low frequency model is that the value of RB is very small. So we short this RB was featured here. So that has gone and we short this path and the value of RU is very large. So keeping uh, RU very large will result in an open circuit here. RU was featured here and CU was featured here. At very low frequency the value of capacitive reactance for CU and C pi will be very very large. So we open circuit these capacitors which were otherwise featuring here and here. So our model looks something like this and if you compare this model with our E model comparing this model with our E model we know that in RE model we had beta plus 1 into RE here. So this can be equated to R pi and the current source here was beta into IB which was the input current. So it can be compared to GMVBE in our case and this remains the same and IC remains the same. So it's a simplified low frequency hybrid pi model which can be derived out of the um, exact hybrid pi model for numerical purposes and I hope this tutorial was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel as well you have a good day and a great life ahead take care bye bye